Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about War in Eternum. New World just came out with a new article going over what war will be like in New World MMO by Amazon. And this game, by the way, is looking absolutely fantastic. And I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about the war that will take place across the lands in Eternum. Eternum is a place of struggle. Not only will you have to contend with the forces of corruption, but you must also protect yourself from other players. Claiming a territory is a good first step in establishing a foothold, providing security and resources for the days ahead. But it also puts you at a greater risk when someone else wants what you have. When the legions of the corrupted attempt to take your fort, this is called a corrupted invasion. You can read more about that in the description below I will provide a link. When other players want to overthrow your territory for their faction, this is war. Before you can wage war on another faction's territory, you must weaken that territory to a point where it's vulnerable and enough to have war declared on it. In order to do this, you must perform the required amount of faction missions. You can read more about the faction missions in the description as well. Next, we're going to talk about the Vanguard. When you go to war, you go on behalf of your faction. The three factions are locked in an constant struggle for control over Eternum. A faction is made up of companies that have declared their loyalty to their faction. When the required tasks have been completed to put a territory into a conflict state, there is a lottery to decide what company will lead the charge into battle. If your company has been selected as the vanguard, the governor can select members of their company to fill the attacking ranks for a 50 vs 50 war. If they have enough members, they can fill the war entirely with members of their own company. However, if a smaller company is selected, they can pick from anyone in their faction or even pick volunteers from the third faction to be involved in the war. For example, if a company from the Syndicate has declared war on a territory owned by the Marauders and they don't have enough warriors to fill their ranks, they can enlist help from members of the Covenant. If you would like to offer up your sword and volunteer for wars, you must travel to the territory where the war is to be fought and sign up on the war boards in the settlement or outside the fort. Prepare for battle. Wars will take place in specific windows of time that are set by the defending company. Being able to set the time the war takes place helps for better coordination of the participants. This also removes the potential for offline raiding or wars taking place during an inconvenient hour for the majority of members involved. If you have been selected to participate in a war, congratulations. You are about to experience a pinnacle PvP moment in New World. Once you have been selected to fight, make sure you're logged in and ready because you'll be getting a notification before the war begins. When the time comes for battle, you'll be teleported from where you are on Eternum straight to the battlefield. The battle begins. The attacking army will attempt to breach the walls of the fort and capture its claim, thus taking over ownership of the whole territory for their faction. Before any fort gates can be damaged and breached, the attackers must first capture three rally points in front of the fort. Once captured, they cannot be retaken by the defenders, and the front line is pushed ever closer. Rally points can be used by the team as respawn points or to access their armory. The defending team will use everything at their disposal to repel the invaders. Weapons of War An extra layer of strategy and tactics are introduced to the equation when you start building siege weapons and siege platforms. As an attacker, you can spend your battle tokens at the war camp's armory to acquire siege platforms and build them on the battlefield, similar to how they are acquired and used in invasions. You can gain additional battle tokens by contributing to the battle. The defending fort will be able to build siege weapons along their walls to help fend off the attack. These siege weapons won't come at a cost to the defenders, but just how powerful these siege weapons are will be dictated by how they have been upgraded through the territory progression system prior to the war. So if you want to protect your fort with the strongest siege weapons available, make sure you're doing the required town projects back at your company settlement. There are multiple entries to the fort, which defenders will need to divide their attention and siege weapons between. Defenders also have siege supplies that are auto-generated during war by siege supply generators. These resources can be used to repair structures including gates, armories, siege supply generators, and siege weapons. Siege weapons and platforms are game changers. We will list a few below, including attackers, siege platforms, and defenders' siege weapons. 
So we're going to start out with attackers siege platforms. Cannon platform is the first mentioned and that is going to have a medium rate of fire and the highest damage per hit. The cannon is most effective against structures and large and slow moving targets. Several cannons focusing their fire can quickly demolish any defensive structure. Next we have fire launcher platform. The fire launcher launches a flaming projectile that bursts on impact and covers the area in fire. It is most effective against infantry and is a good way to counter ranged opponents shooting from the fort. And it's also very effective at aerial denial and keeping opponents out of capture points. Reaper Platform The Reaper is a rapid fire turret that launches bolts at very high speeds. Individually, the bolts don't do a lot of damage, but sustained fire can quickly whittle infantry down. It's most effective against smaller and quicker targets that the other turrets have a hard time hitting. Defenders Siege Weapons First, we're going to start out with the Ballista. The Ballista is the defender's version of the cannon and serves the same role as an anti-structure siege weapon and is most effective against structures and large, slower-moving targets. Next, we have the Explosive Cannon. The Explosive Cannon fires an explosive shot that disrupts and knocks enemies back. It's most effective against groups of infantry and provides an area of denial, like at the rally points in front of the fort. However, its slow rate of fire makes it largely ineffective against fast-moving targets. The Repeater Turret Defender's version of the Repeater is functionally the same as the attacker's. High rate of fire, low damage per shot, and is most effective against smaller, quicker targets. Fire Dropper The Fire Dropper pours burning, molten liquid down on anyone below. It does high damage over time, making it most effective against groups of enemies attacking the gate. Next we have the Horn of Resilience. The Horn of Resilience provides a temporary healing and defensive buff to all allies in the area. It has a lengthy cooldown but can turn the tide of battle when used at the right moment. Now we're going to be looking at traps, which are available to attackers and defenders. There's firstly the Inferno Mine. When an enemy gets close enough, the Inferno Mine bursts and covers the area in fire. It is highly effective at area denial and most effective when placed in choke points. Next we have the powder keg. The powder keg does the highest damage of any siege weapon, making it extremely effective against gates. Its fuse must be lit manually and has a lengthy duration. The powder keg won't detonate if it's destroyed early, requiring players to actively defend it. Going home. Once the war has come to its climatic end, Players on both sides of the conflict will be teleported off the battlefield so that they continue their adventures in Eternum. Want to win honor and glory in the name of your faction? Wars must be waged and the stakes couldn't be higher. It's winner takes all. Should the attacking army prevail, they now control the territory and everything in it. Planting a new flag in the name of their faction and pushing the front lines forward towards total dominance. Not only does war excite me, it makes me very, very, very interested in what actually Amazon Game Studios will do coming up in the future. You see a lot of good content coming with the 50v50, and I'm just hoping there's plenty of solo and duo content for th groups of you know 1 to 15 players to do. I don't think it should always be 50 versus 50 as the main content in this game, as there's a lot of people that love small groups and don't like the big shouting matches between 50 v 50 battles if done correctly the 50 v 50 can be an absolute blast but I'm very excited for this and I cannot wait for the game to come out let's hear what you guys have to say in the comments below make sure to like and subscribe so you can see more new world content as soon as it comes out you can get the first bits of information and always be talking about it and seeing you know what's coming up next so I'll see you guys next time in the next video and thanks again.